Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Lion's Head Meatballs. That's right, some people think the name comes from their large size, while others believe it's because eating these gives you the strength of a lion. But the actual answer is not quite as mythical. All right, apparently the people that invented these thought the crinkled up cabbage cooked around the meatballs looked to them like a lion's mane. And I'm guessing a little bit of rice wine may have been involved in that. But anyway, that's what they thought, and it works for me. So with that, let's go ahead and get started by rehydrating some shiitake mushrooms, which means putting about an ounce of dried shiitake in a bowl, and then pouring over some boiling water, which we will let sit for about an hour, or until they soften up enough to slice. And while we're waiting for that, we can move on to chop up some water chestnuts, which for me come packed in water in a can, sliced like this. And what we'll do after draining about a half a cup of those is go ahead and chop those up with a cleaver until they are fairly finely minced. And while those do taste nice, we are mostly adding those in for their texture. And then once those are chopped, we're basically going to do the same thing with a piece of tofu. Some firm tofu to be exact. And what I think we should do is slice it first, and then we'll pile those up and cut them into strips, and then eventually turn those strips and cut across into a dice at which point we can continue chopping until they're as small as we want. And by the way, yes, it does feel kind of funny adding tofu to a pork meatball. I mean, I kind of feel like a double agent, but it really does help keep these meatballs very light and tender. So we will go ahead and chop that up until it's fairly fine. And I know there's a couple bigger pieces there, but those are gonna break up as we mix it with the pork, which by the way is the next step. So once chopped, let's go ahead and transfer our water chestnuts and tofu into a large bowl. And then to it, add one pound of nice, fatty, freshly ground pork. And how I knew mine was freshly ground and fatty is that I had to butcher do it. Okay, you do not have to settle for the meat in the case. Just go to the butcher counter, point at a nice, fatty piece of pork shoulder, and tell the butcher to grind you a pound of that. And not only won't they mind, they will enjoy doing it. And then to that, we will add some finely minced green onions plus about three or four cloves of crushed garlic, as well as some freshly and finely grated ginger, which we should probably smear around a little bit to get a head start on the mixing. And then to this, we will add a splash of Chinese rice wine, which is called Xiaojing, or something like that. But if you don't have that, like I don't, you can just use some dry sherry, which works nicely. And then we will also want to add some soy sauce to this, as well as some salt, and a little touch of cayenne, which we will balance with a little bit of brown sugar. And then we will finish up with one large whole egg that I like to drop in from a high distance so the yolk breaks when it hits. And then last but not least, a little dusting of cornstarch. And that's it, we'll go ahead and get in there with a nice clean hand and we will mix all this until thoroughly combined. And fair warning, when you first start mixing, it's gonna seem kinda loose and thin and a little wet and like it's not gonna come together. But don't worry, just keep mixing and mashing. And in just a few minutes, it will tighten up and kind of pull together. And you should eventually end up with something that looks like this. And theoretically, at this point, if we had to, we could start forming our meatballs. But like all seasoned ground meat mixtures, I really do think we should wrap this up and let it chill in the fridge for at least an hour or two, which I believe gives those flavors time to develop, as well as I think it's going to be easier to work with. So I did pop mine in the fridge for a few hours, at which point we'll go ahead and pull it out. And once unwrapped, we'll go ahead and form these into some nice large meatballs, using, of course, some nice wet fingers and palms. Because as you may have heard before, damp hands make smooth balls. So we'll go ahead and form some nice large meatballs as shown. And if you make them as big as I am, you'll get exactly six out of this recipe. And then once shaped, these are traditionally deep fried or browned in a pan, which is kind of messy, but also kind of difficult because this mixture is very, very soft. So what I think is much easier is placing these on some oiled foil on a pan and simply popping them under a hot broiler for about 10 minutes or until they're beautifully browned. And while we don't want these cooked through, we do want that outside surface kind of seared and sealed, which we've accomplished here quickly with very little mess. But regardless of how your meatballs get browned, we'll go ahead and let those cool while we move on to prep our pot, which we will be lining with some cabbage. And what we'll do first is trim off the bottom of a variety called Napa cabbage, which is delicious and beautiful. But if you can't find it, regular cabbage will work. And what I like to do is slice about half of it in ribbons, and then we'll go ahead and place that in the bottom of our pot. And then once that's in, we'll go ahead and arrange the whole leaves on top of that like this. And not to spoil the surprise, 
but eventually we're going to nestle our meatballs on top of that. But not before we add in our sliced shiitake, which by now have hopefully soaked long enough to be soft and sliceable. And I'm not sure if you have to or not, but the stems on these are fairly fibrous and tough, so I generally like to trim those out before I slice. And by the way, if you can't find dry shiitake, you can always use fresh mushrooms. So please feel free to use those if you want. I mean, you are after all the humongous of your fungus. Although if you do use fresh button mushrooms, I would probably saute those before you use them. But anyway, we'll go ahead and slice and scatter our mushrooms over the top, at which point we can nestle our meatballs into our cabbage leaves, ideally equally spaced. And of course, we're also gonna pour over the accumulated juices. But man cannot cook with accumulated juices alone, which is why once that's set, we need to mix up our cooking liquid, which we'll start by straining our mushroom soaking liquid into this bowl. And that's just so we catch any sand that might've been in those mushrooms. And then to that, we will add some chicken stock or broth, as well as a few tablespoons of soy sauce and another couple tablespoons of our sherry wine. And please note how very carefully I'm measuring this, as in not very carefully, which is fine. It's not one of those dishes. And of course, we can always adjust things later if we need. And then we'll go ahead and finish up with a little bit of sesame oil, plus another spoon of cornstarch. And we'll take a whisk and mix that until it's dissolved. At which point we can go ahead and add that to our pot. And yes, of course you could just dump that right in. But for some reason, it just feels like we should bathe each meatball as we do this. I don't know why, but it does. And that's it. Once our cooking liquid is in, we will head to the stove and place this on high heat. Because what we want to do is bring this up to a boil. And then once we see our liquid bubbling enthusiastically like this, we will lower our heat to medium low, cover this, and let it simmer for 20 minutes. And if everything goes according to plan, in about 20 minutes it should look something like this. Okay, that cabbage will have slumped down, and our meatballs should be just about cooked. And at this point, I like to give them a nice basting. Oh, and if my pan leg looks like it has cornstarch on it, because I dropped an entire container on the floor, that's exactly what happened. But anyway, back to the recipe. What we'll do to finish this is turn our heat back to medium high and cook it for about 10 minutes uncovered, just to reduce and intensify those cooking liquids a little bit. Which, of course, we can always sample to see how we're doing. And after tasting, I actually decided to add a spoon of brown sugar, since sugar is a very common ingredient in this cooking liquid. But since I did add some to the meatball already, I decided to wait until this point to decide. So I did stir in a little bit of that, but otherwise I thought it was perfectly seasoned. And like I said, all we need to do to finish this is cook it uncovered on medium high for about 10 minutes or so, or until that broth reduces to our liking. Okay, I like mine pretty brothy, whereas other folks prefer it more like a sauce, which you can achieve by reducing or adding more cornstarch. But to me, this was looking perfect right here. So I turned it off and served up. And of course, besides our lion's head meatball, we're also gonna to wanna to enjoy that with our cabbage and mushrooms. And then once I had that all spooned up, I went ahead and draped some of that cabbage over the top. Because like I said in the intro, apparently it's the look of this crinkled up Napa cabbage on the meatball that reminded the people that invented and named this dish of a lion's mane. So I went ahead and arranged some of that over the top. And when I was done, it really didn't look like a lion's mane. It looked a lot more like cabbage draped over a meatball. But still, pretty good looking nonetheless. And I went ahead and finished up with some sliced green onions, as well as a little drizzle of chili oil, which is nothing more than oil in which we've steeped some red pepper flakes. So I went ahead and spooned a little of that over the top. And that's it, our lion's head meatball is ready to enjoy. So let me go ahead and grab a spoon and dig in, and also grab a fork to hedge my bets. And thanks to using some nice fatty pork, Plus, adding in those chopped water chestnuts and tofu, we've achieved a meatball so light and tender, it almost defies description. All right, people throw the term melt in your mouth around pretty casually, but these meatballs really are melt in your mouth. All right, just that addictive combination of something that's highly flavorful and rich and satisfying, yet somehow delivered in this feather light texture. Plus, they basically come with a free bowl of soup. So I just absolutely love everything about these. And I usually have a pretty good idea of how authentic or not authentic a recipe I do is, but this time I don't, since I've probably looked at about a hundred different recipes for this, and not a single one of them is exactly the same as another. But what I do know is that these were amazing, 
which is why I really do hope you give them a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.